What's up everyone, Jill here for Premiere Basics, a weekly series where we teach you all the ins and outs of Adobe Premiere Pro. Today we're going over three easy to make glitch transitions in Premiere Pro. But first, a big thank you to Zyro for sponsoring this video. Now without any further ado, let's get right into Premiere Pro and start creating our awesome glitch transitions. And for all the transitions, we need two shots because we need to transition from the first to the second shot, of course. Now first, find the spot where you want to transition. Then from that cut, go 15 frames back and place a cut on your first clip. Do the same for your second clip, but 15 frames forward from the cut. So now you have two clips of 15 frames long, which are going to be used for the transition. Now go to the effects panel and look for the wave warp effect. Apply it to both of these clips. Now on the first clip, go to the effects controls and set the wave type to smooth noise. And make an animation of the wave height going from 0 on the first frame to 200 on the last one. Then right click on the first keyframe and ease it out. Then open the drop down and drag the lever all the way to the right. This will cause the animation to start slow and go faster near the end. Now for the other properties, you can of course customize it however you like. But I'm going to show you my values on the screen right here. Next, open the motion property and uncheck the uniform scale checkbox. Then animate the scale width from 0 in the beginning to around 120 at the end. Once again, make a nice graph with the animation. Then animate the position from normal in the beginning to slightly to the right near the end. So change the first value a bit and once again smoothen the animation. Once done, you already have this animation. And it looks quite cool, right? We're going to do exactly the same for the second clip, but here you're going to start with the biggest values and animate them to their origin. Once again, smoothen the animation by easing in the last keyframe and dragging the levers all the way to the left. This is the result that we have so far from this transition. Next, right click in the project panel and create an adjustment layer. Place it above the transition clips. Then head to the effects panel and look for the VR chromatic aberrations effect and drag it onto that layer. Now uncheck the auto VR properties and set the frame layout to stereoscopic over under. Then we're going to animate the different aberrations. So set them all to zero in the beginning and then near the cut, change the values to whatever you like. These are the values that I have used. Then go to the last frame and put them back to zero. And once done, this will be the final look. Let's go over to our next effect. Once again, drag an adjustment layer above your clips. And we're going to place all of the effects on that layer. The first effect is going to be the VR digital glitch effect. We're going to set all the properties to zero underneath the distortion tab. Then place a keyframe for the color distortion, the distortion evolution, and the color evolution. Then go to the moment where the cut between the clips is and set the color distortion and the distortion evolution a bit higher. Then go to the end of the clip and set them back to zero. I'll also place a keyframe for the color evolution. Then go to the cut and go five frames backwards and set the color evolution to minus 100. Then five frames further than the cut, set it to 100. And next, we're going to place the lens distortion effect on this adjustment layer. Now animate the curvature going from zero to minus 35 and back to zero. Now these keyframes can be also placed five frames in front and five frames behind the cut. And this transition already looks really nice, but we're going to make it more like a scan effect. So from the motion property, uncheck the uniform scale checkbox and set the scale height from 100 to 0 in the middle and then back to 100 at the end. And bam, the transition is done. Now, like mentioned in the beginning, this video is sponsored by Zyro. But what is Zyro exactly? Well, it's a website that helps you build your own website. Wait, what? Why would I need a website? Well, because you're probably a content creator like me. And as a creator, it's super important to showcase your work all over the internet so that potential clients can see it. But isn't that really why Instagram or YouTube is made? Well, yeah, but it's not ideal. A website is much more professional and with Zyro, it's actually super easy and fast to set it up. So let me show you how it works. Head over to the first link down below to get onto their website. Then create an account and hit the create new website button. You can either use one of their amazing templates or you can let the AI generator create a website for you. Or you can import your already existing website. Now let's see what the AI generator creates for us. First we need the category. So let's go for a portfolio. Then we get to select all of the functions that our website needs to offer. I would like an online store, a contact form, an Instagram feed and some videos. I don't need any maps or a blog. 
then hit the generate button and let's wait a second. Zyro now offers us three designs and if you don't like them you can generate them again but I really like this one right here so let's take that one. Once you open it up you can alter anything you want, you can add extra elements with just a simple click of a button, whether it's a photo, a video or even an extra Instagram feed. And it's also super easy to rearrange an element. Within just a couple of minutes I turned the template from this into this right here. Awesome right? And now we can publish it and get more clients. But what if you have a question or if something goes wrong? Well, no worries. They have an amazing support that is available 24 seven. And the best part, if you click the first link in the description down below and use the code Premier Basics at checkout, you will get three months for free with any yearly plan. And that's by far the best price deal on the market so far. So don't hesitate and click that link right away. Now for the final transition, we're going to get creative with our two clips. Now place them above each other in a timeline. And we're going to cut the upper clip in short pieces because we want to make it a little bit trippy. You can also do this for the bottom clip later on if needed. Then place the crop effect on it and set either one of the values to 50%. Use the transform effect above the crop effect to rearrange the position and scaling if needed. Now on the next clip, do the same but make it another value. Then play around with the positioning of the upper and lower clip as well and as well as the size. And if you want to make it more trippy, then duplicate the upper clip by holding alt while dragging. Then apply the tint effect to this and map the black to teal and the white maybe to orange or red. Then set the blending mode to multiply and change the scale of the clip. And you can always use the same adjustment layer from the very first transition above these trippy cuts as well. Now play a bit with different values for different properties and that will give you this awesome glitch transition. And that's it for today guys. I hope you guys enjoyed these transitions. Let me know in the comments down below what you would like to see next week. Now don't forget to click the link to get started making your own website. And as always, stay creative.